is Al Michaels. He is the legendary broadcaster. He is a great friend of mine. And Al, I have to say that I'm still seriously excited about having you on today because I feel like this is my one and only chance to work with you unless, God forbid, I get to go do an Olympics someday. So I feel like the pressure is on me to try to impress you more so than I would at a normal Toscana dinner. So. Well, well, why don't we just plan to do the 2024 Olympics in Los Angeles? I, I got to host the... Uh, Oh, there was the rollout press conference, which was a little bit pre of a press conference slash uh, pep rally yesterday on the beach at Santa Monica, and uh, we'll see. I think L.A.'s got a pretty good chance to wind up with this thing, L.A. or Paris, in 2024. So you and I will be doing uh, either beach volleyball or, uh, you know, I'll be watching you from, uh, you know, somewhere outside of uh, Forest Lawn. I want to tell you that I, I'm available. Uh, I will be there wee wee. I will be there whether it is here or there. I can't think of anything more exciting than covering the Olympics. That's one of the only things I never got to do. And the idea of doing it with you is downright ridiculous. Well, I've done eight of them now, and I'm signed up for Rio for number nine. Susie, so, you know, it's a funny thing because everybody says, uh, oh, the Olympics, they're going to have uh, horrible traffic problems and cost overruns and terrorist threats. And this leads into every Olympics. And then uh, the last two that I've done have been fantastic. Vancouver was wonderful. So is London. Uh, it's a great experience. We, look, we live in this world where uh, there's, there'll never be nirvana, but at least you get nirvana for a couple of weeks. I mean, the world comes together. Uh, the atmosphere is fantastic. If the city does it right, as L.A. did in, in 1984, you still reap the benefits uh, from an Olympics 30 years later. And uh, I'd love to see it happen again here because it, it's, it's the most special thing I've ever been a part of in sports. It would be so funny to ask you, Al, what's your favorite Olympics moment? Because that might be possibly one of the more ridiculous questions to ask you. Well, you know what the answer yes. is. It had to be uh, you know, high diving. In, no, it, in the, it was, it, it was uh, 1980, of course, in the U.S.-Soviet uh, hockey game, followed by the U.S. winning the gold medal against Finland a couple of days later. So, I mean, to me, that's one of those deals where uh, – uh, 35 years ago, I got to experience the greatest thing imaginable, and uh, that will never be taken off the top of the shelf. I mean, that was just as good as it gets. And in eight days, I'm sure you would respond to the Patriots opener as being one of the greatest games you're ever going to witness. Uh, what we have to ask you, in eight, eight days from now, who are you going to be announcing as they come on the field? Will it be Tom Brady starting as quarterback or Jimmy Garoppolo? What do you think? I have no idea. As Bob Kraft said uh, about two or three months ago, you want to get a deal done, you get the lawyers out of the room. So now they got the lawyers out of the room, and they have the judge in the room. And, I mean, this thing has been going on. I heard you talking about it at the top of the show. It's ridiculous. It's been going on for over seven months. I read a column yesterday, it might have been uh, in the Daily News in New York, I think it was Mike Lupica who wrote, this thing could have been settled in 30 minutes by Judge Judy. Yeah. It's the, the perfect description. And it's ridiculous as well. I mean, can you imagine or can you think of anything in your career that's been anything like this before? No, because it, it, something like this doesn't go on forever and ever. It, it's not, look, the one thing I do know is it's not as simple as, the ideal gas law and all that, all that other nonsense. I mean, nobody understands what that is. This is, you know, was something nefarious done after the balls wound up in the official's locker room? Were they taken out? Were they deflated in the bathroom? Uh, and it also cuts to uh, the issue of, you know, who has control right now? And the NFLPA pretty much gave the commissioner all of these overarching powers when they made that last deal in 2011 and now they're trying to undo it. So I have no idea what's going to happen with this. And, you know, even when Berman uh, decides to rule, whether it's today or tomorrow, that doesn't mean there's, there's not going to be an appeal. This thing could, could still be dragged out. I mean, the next step, it's really incredible. You're absolutely right. And, and wouldn't it make all the sense in the world to say, guys, uh, no matter what the decision is, move forward, play the season. The, the, the negative attention it's bringing to the game right now is just incredible. Well, it would be easy to say that, except there's precedent here. So the league doesn't want to say, hey, look, if you, know, if you go to court, if you, if you take us to court, if you appeal, if you do blah, 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 then you're going to win. They don't want that to happen. I mean, the, the league feels that they – and the, when I say the league, the owners, the commissioner, whatever, the, the hierarchy, 
if they have to compromise to an extent that they don't want to do it here, then that opens it up in the future for, hey, look, I didn't, I didn't like my punishment, so I'm going to do the same thing that, uh, that the Patriots and Brady did. So uh, I think that's what it amounts to, and I, both sides have their backs up against the wall right now. If either side had the chance to take a mulligan on the way they operated throughout this whole procedure, what do you think the NFL would do differently? I think they would have gotten rid of this uh, much, much earlier. I think, I think wh whatever was going to happen needed to happen, you know, right after the Super Bowl, uh, maybe even before it. Uh, and, I, again, I understand it's difficult because you did need to have some sort of an investigation. It became a, you know, uh, he said, she said kind of thing at the beginning. So you didn't know what the deal was. Nobody really even understood this. And then you bring uh, Wells in, and then it takes like three months for all of this to get done. People still don't understand it. I don't know. Even with a mulligan, I'm not sure what these guys could have done. But, I mean, the whole thing is it's ridiculous on one hand, but, Susie, I'll say this. It doesn't matter to the fans in the sense that the football fan can't wait for the football season to start. Uh, he or she will be there on opening night no matter who's playing. Uh, but the, the tangential fan, and even the fan who's not interested, is now more interested because they want to be in the loop. All of their friends are talking about it. They're saying, what's going on here? Right. So if anything, as crazy as it is, as ridiculous as it is, there's now more interest in the National Football League than there was before. The great Al Michaels joining us on the Rich Eisen Show, and that's why I would move now to RG3 and talk about actual football. You've seen him. you spent so much time with him on Sunday Night Football. What do you think the future foretells for him? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know at this point. I know it's not particularly good for him at the at the outset of the season. We know that Kirk Cousins is going to be the starting quarterback. Yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised to the extent we had him in his rookie year. He was tremendous. Uh, uh, the, the, the city of Washington was going uh, bananas over him. He looked so good. You know, injuries helped to do him in. And now he's to the point where it's probably better to go someplace else, I would assume, at this point, because he's in his fourth year in the league and he's the backup quarterback. And, uh, you know, we're hearing all about what's going on back there, whether it's true or, or not true or 50% true or what. But uh, to me, he seems like a guy who's going to need to change the scenery pretty soon. I don't know if you heard or not in the intro, but I have Peyton Manning coming on in this show, a, a sweet little quarterback named Peyton Manning. I've heard of him. Uh, nice guy. Uh, in the third hour, what's your favorite Peyton Manning story? I know how close you guys are. I'll just say this about Peyton Manning. I mean, here's a guy, he and Eli and Cooper grew up with, you know, fantastic parents. And you can see it. I mean, they're so courteous. I've been with Peyton on, you know, a number of occasions, had him out to play golf at Belder. Somebody comes up to the table to, to just to say hi, hey, really enjoy watching you play. He stands up. He stands up and shakes their hand. Uh, Eli is the same way. And uh, these guys, you know, had a phenomenal upbringing. Uh, I think he's uh, as great as he is on the field. He's even better off the field. Uh, and it just shows you, you know, you, you, ha you have that kind of an upbringing and uh, you carry it through the rest of your life. But he's a very, you know what he is, he's just a guy who's in touch with everything. Uh, you've heard about the things he does where, you know, he'll, find out about it, or somebody will send him a letter about, you know, there's a, a, a sick child somewhere, and he'll call. I mean, this is the kind of thing that Peyton's done throughout his career. I think, you know, of all the guys I've covered in the National Football League, he's, he's just right at the top on every level. Al Michaels, of course, on the Rich Eisen Show. I feel like you hear your voice, Al. I don't really have to give you a re-reminder of who you are, obviously, but for all the radio listeners out there and those of you watching on TV, Al Michaels here as well. And our poll question today, and you're going to be leading it for most of this, I would imagine. Whose career would you want to have? Yours, Shaq's, or Peyton Manning's? Do we put Matthew Hasselbeck in? I feel like that's like, you know, Matthew's going to give me some ribbing for this later in the show. Yeah, but. we put Matthew on there, Al, and, and Peter Gammons, who's also coming right. up later. Whose career would you rather have? Well, I don't, I don't think you're going to say Peter. Well, he, but <laughs> the deal is this. I don't want to have surgery. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to stick with with mine. I love you know, it. Shaq, Shaq, remember Shaq had the foot surgery. You know, we know what Peyton's had through the years and all of that. No, th those guys pay a, a different price. I'd rather sit in this easy chair right now and talk to you. And you'd rather hit them straight today. Uh, well, imagine. whatever. No, I'm going to take a day off. Believe it or not. No, no greens for you today. Not no, no green, no never no greens, greens for no you. No greens and no vegetables either. <laughs> Al, thank you so much for joining us. It means so much to me. I really appreciate it. Susie, I think you should do this full time.
Uh, is anybody listening? I'm available. There somebody, you go. If somebody can drive the kids to school, I can show up in a studio. See you at the 24 Olympics. I can't wait. Love to Linda. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.